Hello, hello, hello. You are listening to the No Brainers Empowering Possibilities Show. These are dialogues of encouragement with fresh perspectives, invitations to ahas, a little bit of science, a dash of behavioral psychology, and a whole lot of creative fun. So if leveling up is on your radar, my friend, you are at the right show. I'm your host, Roseanne Marsh, the author of the teen and parent empowerment curriculum called Level Up, Empowering Possibilities, and you are listening to episode number 27, Forgiveness, part one, to forgive or not to forgive. There's one guarantee in life, and that somehow, somewhere, by someone, we may be offended, betrayed, taken advantage of, abused, or hurt. And hopefully we won't have to experience a lot of those, but there are some that have not only gone through all those experiences, but they have had injustices against them that really never should have happened. To survive and thrive mentally, emotionally, and physically, it could take years to sift and sort out emotions and feelings around it all. But as we seek to heal in our life, at some point, the conversation or the invitation to consider forgiveness may come up. Is forgiveness a good idea? Is forgiveness for everyone? What are the pros and cons to consider if you could benefit from forgiveness? And if you do choose to forgive, what are some things that could help? So today I talk about some ways that I've been helped on my road to forgiveness when I did choose to do it. I was in my 30s and I'd been divorced for several years. I knew and ran into periodically a physician who'd fly up from California. And a lot of times he would frequent the single events that we had. And mainly it was the church activities that I frequented. And so when he asked me to go out to dinner, I told him that I would meet him at the defined restaurant, which happened to be my favorite fish place. And as we exchanged small talk about our background and our upbringing, the conversation swiftly changed to the question of why did you get divorced? So I was kind of caught off guard with that question because I thought we were just in the mode of getting to know each other. Honestly, I think I just gave this generic response. And then right away, he started talking about why he got divorced. It was as if he wanted the subject to come up so that he could have a chance to dump all the feelings that he had around it. And I'm not sure that I had many chances to even interject during that night, but you could tell that he went on and on about the injustices, the hurt, the resentment. And as I listened through the meal, I realized that the food on my plate that usually was my favorite, I didn't even touch it as I was almost at watching an actor on stage regurgitating out his view of a very unfair marriage that ended in divorce, a divorce that he did not want. And I remember thinking, wow, he has some really strong feelings about this. And you could tell that those emotions were raw and real to him. And I remember thinking, man, I'm sorry he went through this. And he's going to need some time to heal. Certainly not someone I was interested in getting involved with. And in fact, I think I called the evening early because I did really have a legitimate reason. I was leaving early in the morning. But I chalked that evening up to well, I gave someone a listening ear and hopefully that was of some help to him. A month later, I was with another friend and he introduced me to his two good friends that he had known that had been married for about 10 years. And we were out to dinner together and we were laughing and talking and I got to know them. And the wife mentioned the name of her ex-husband and it was the physician that I had just gone to dinner with. I said, wait, how long have you guys been divorced? And she said, well, it's been about 12 years. And I mentioned that I had gone to dinner with her ex-husband a month ago. And he talked as if the, the divorce was something current. And I didn't pry in the relationship, but what I realized is that this man was harboring and keeping fresh and alive those things that he felt were an injustice. He spoke as if it was like a current event and yet 12 years had passed and his son was now a teenager. And I also realized quite, quite soon that there are two sides to the story. And I wonder why he could not move on. Why was there so much energy wrapped around the justification, the vitriol, the anger? 
certainly he was living in the past and he was keeping himself bound to a certain time and space. I also realized that within his story, there was never any responsibility for his own side. Did he play a part? I really don't know. It didn't matter. But this was a stark example of someone stuck in the space of being a victim, whether justified or not. And you could see the unhappiness that showed on his face. I was someone virtually unknown to him, yet he wanted me to hear in living color the travesty of 12 years prior. He was chained to the past. He was consumed with bitterness. So have you ever encountered someone like this? Do you know someone like this? Have you just met someone, the story of what someone has done to them has become who they are? It's consuming their thoughts. It's driving their behaviors. It's pressing hard on their ability to cope in life. And many of the stories are incredibly hard. The things they've endured or gone through are almost unfathomable and your heart goes out to them in, for that life situation that for many was not their fault. And sometimes it is their fault, but it's still a tough thing to endure. There are tough things. There's unimaginable things. And then there's also on the other side of the spectrum, small slights and offenses or misinterpretations that we latch onto and the decision is made to keep it as an offense, to hold on to it, to carry it, and to bear the weight. And for many, it's something that it's almost too heavy to bear. For many, they don't have no idea how to put it down. For some, they didn't know that they can put it down or at least move towards healing in part of their life. So the spectrum of things that we experience ranges from unimaginable to these small slights. So to live in a world where people are not victimized, that would be the coolest world to fight for, right? But we're not in that world. So we have to fight to cope. We have to try to heal. We have to try to go on. But there are many ways that we can do that. One of them is talking, talking about it. Just like this man did for him, it was, his way of coping, sharing our story. Have you, have you ever yourself felt like you were done an injustice and there was a release valve when you were able to tell someone about it? I know I have. Oh yes, it's cathartic to be able to talk with those that you trust and love and have the support of those you trust. And then to be helped by a gifted therapist who asks the right questions to get you talking and thinking and evaluating. That can be so valuable. But even that trusted friend, the one who doesn't judge, but who helps bear one another's burden could be a huge gift. So talking about it can be helpful. But there's also there's those that bear it in silence. They don't talk about it. They can't talk about it. Or they choose to numb or escape the pain. Have you ever borne your slights in silence? Have you, any of you not felt safe to speak about it? Not knowing what to do and honestly feeling like you can't even deal with it because it's too painful when you do start taking the lid off of it? I have. Oh, I had an imaginary shelf during my adult years. When something painful happened to me or I perceived an offense, instead of talking about it or confronting it, oh, I had an actual mental shelf with boxes on it. And I would compartmentalize things in boxes on that shelf. And in that box, if I, if I didn't see it, I didn't have to deal with it. And I could pretend that life was okay. And it made sense for me to deal with my life this way. Until one day, that day when that shelf came crashing down and I had boxes spilled out all over. I was in process overload. I was dealing with a huge spectrum of emotions. So today I wanted to share with you some things that I tried because of things that people helped me understand. And it was at this time that I began to discover that there are ways to deal with life hurts and not have to tuck them neatly away. I was thinking that they were safe up there, that they weren't affecting me. 
But reality, when we step into the world of the mind and the body, those unaddressed hurts, those slights that I tucked away that were not truly gone or hidden, they lived in my subconscious. And each day they were taking up space. They were still very much alive. And they were waiting for me to give them the attention that they wanted and quite frankly needed. But here was my biggest awareness when I finally had to deal with all those boxes that had fallen off the shelf. I realized that they were affecting my life. Deep within my subconscious, they were the stories, the experiences. They were defining how I act and react to life. They were in the mix when I was making decisions, when I was taking opportunities or not taking opportunities. They were defining for me how I felt about myself because they had an opinion and they were affecting my life. And I thought they were safe, tucked away in a box that would never bother me and never affect me. Okay, that was pretty vulnerable. But have any of you reacted to life's offenses or injustices the way I did? Even now, as you listen to this, you have your way of coping with things. We do what's necessary. We do what we know, or we do what we've been taught. But here's the amazing thing. When we're open to change, to new ideas, to some spring cleaning, to some lightening the load, one of the invitations that will surely come up would be to consider forgiveness. So let's talk about what forgiveness is and what it is not. Forgiveness has a misconception that it means that we are saying that what somebody did to us is okay. And that we are just going to exonerate them from the responsibility if we forgive them. It's not that. Forgiveness is deciding that the weight of carrying that experience is hard. And we no longer want to carry the weight of the situation. When we're able to hand over the hurt and the pain and the fear and the disappointment, the frustration and the anger to like a third party, now I'm talking like our higher power or mentally someone else we can envision, we can fill ourselves with self-love and with peace and calm and healing. You know, we can relieve our bodies of pain and discomfort and possible diseases and ailments because of the weight and the toxins from what those infractions against us have created. So forgiveness is the grace gifts that we can give ourselves. We may not understand the motives of another or be able to change their hearts in any way. But the one person that we have total control of is ourselves. So if you ask the psychology world to explain what forgiveness looks like, they would say it's a deliberate decision to let go of any feelings of resentment or vengeance towards any individual or group that has done you harm, regardless of whether or not they deserve forgiveness. Forgiveness does not condone what they did or make excuses for them, nor does it mean forgetting about the offense, not forgetting not forgetting can be valuable because it keeps us safe in the future. And forgiveness doesn't even mean facing the other person. Forgiveness is not even for that other person. It's for us. It's so that we can lay down the burden of carrying this and continue healing things that have tethered our heart and our mind and our spirit to that perpetrator. It's a form of moving forward when we're open to it. It's an invitation to ease our burden, should we choose it. We hopefully are focusing on a healthy lifestyle, but you know we have to remember that negative emotions affect us physically even. There's one negative emotion that is super detrimental to our health, and that is bitterness. So what is bitterness? It's anger and resentment and disappointment of being treated unfairly. You know, in Hebrews, I think if you are a biblical reader at all, it says, see that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Meaning that when we get bitterness in us, when that's planted in there, the decision for it to grow 
and do destruction is ours. You know, we were scarred or hurt or wounded by someone else. But then we decide from there on, what are we going to allow to grow? Some people are so bitter, have been bitter for so long, they don't, they don't even realize that it's become part of their personality. Let's talk a minute about some ways to break the chains, because it truly is a chain, a chain of events in our mind, our body, and our spirit that keeps those memories those offenses, those injustices, and those feelings alive. And it's taking up the conscious and subconscious space. And if we were a computer, we would say that it's draining our battery. And that is energy that if we free it up, can help us create our future. It can help us celebrate in the present. It can help us progress and grow. And it's hard to move forward when we have the heaviness of the past that's holding us back. So sometimes holding on does more damage than letting go. So if we were a computer, we can't upgrade to the latest version if we're holding on to the old app, if we hold on to the old story, if we hold on to the old wounds, if we hold on to the old beliefs. When we continue to carry the stories and the worries and the wounds of the past in our memory, it takes energy to keep them alive. That's the energy that we could use to catapult ourselves forward with new projects and new dreams. So our experiences of the past and the present affect our actions, our reactions, our non-actions. You may even be thinking, ah, I don't know if I can step into forgiveness. But remember that none of us escape experiencing something hard or challenging in this life. When we are, while we aren't here to be perfect, we are here to learn and grow, and expand, and find meaning to those things that life throws at us. So I used an analogy years ago, and bzz, 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 warning, it didn't sit well with some people in that class. In fact, it triggered them. Now, if you're familiar with triggers, then you know that a trigger is not necessarily a bad thing, right? It's an invitation to explore and get curious about what that emotion is that just got brought up. And once you can see what that emotion is, then we can search underneath for that root. And that's when the work begins. So if you don't know how to do the work or curious about how to find the root, well, Level Up has a whole chapter on triggers and finding in your subconscious the things that have hurt us, that have affected us, are driving our behaviors and they're holding us back. And it's amazing to get a realization of some of those things that are holding us back. And even more amazing when we can transmute them, change them to something different. So let's get back to the analogy I used um, that triggered a huge group in the class I was teaching. Here it is, you ready? If a rattlesnake bites you, you would not willingly choose to carry the venom around inside of you. You would take steps to extract that venom so it doesn't totally destroy you. You would also stay away from rattlesnakes in the future, right? But for your benefit, for your progression, you would take out the venom and nurse yourself to good health. Now, we may not see it as a controllable that we have, but forgiving it's about choosing not to carry the venom, the hurt, the shame, the anger, the disappointment, the pain, the betrayal, the abuse, the confusion, the denial, the shock, the trauma, and that list can go on. And I'm not saying it's easy, right? To get beyond, I'm not saying that, but there are egregious, because there are egregious offenses and almost unforgivable things that happen to us. There are things that should never had happened and are such deep wounds that it seems unfathomable that we should forgive. And it may seem impossible to get to that point, but forgiveness is not for the offender. The forgiveness is for us. The first step in overcoming bitterness is to practice forgiveness. Some people have experienced some horrible things. And they have every reason to be bitter. However, this emotion does not hurt whoever offended you. It hurts us. When we forgive, 
the vending person or situation no longer has power over us. There's a quote by Nelson Mandela that he said when he was being released from prison. Remember, he was incarcerated for a lot of years because of his fight for peace and rights in South Africa. And he was unjustly incarcerated. And when they were liberating him from prison, he said, as I walked out of the door towards the gate that would lead to my freedom, I knew that if I didn't leave my bitter, bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison. So how can we move towards forgiveness laying down that weight? She said, first thing was make a decision that you want to let it go. If you're not resolute on letting things go, it's like a mental tug of war that you have pulling back and forth. So get clear. Do I want to let this go? Am I ready to let this go? Second, you can say anything you want on paper. There is great value in journaling. Now, you may want to type it on a computer if that's you, but I love writing pen to paper. There's a connection there. You can call out anyone you want and you're safe. No one can stop your freedom of speech when you open up the gates of the dam and let the floodgates flow on paper. And when you're done, you can destroy all the vitriol, the anger, the disappointment, the anguish, and the fears that you've written down. But you let untap the cork and you let it flow out. So allow yourself time to get as much as you can, write as much as you can, write, write, write until you have cramps in your hands. And it may, may be one time that you write, let out the pressure, or it might be months of processing and feeling, or years. But feeling is the key. As you journal, write it all out. The effect that it had on you, how you wished it would have been different, what you would say to that person or them if they were in front of you right now, the changes in your life that happened because that did happen. And now, huh, the changes you're going to make because you are not going to let this define you or you're not going to let this hold you back. Step up on your mental town square box and cry out through your writing what you're going to do in your life to move forward. Write out your hopes and your dreams. Revisit those aspirations and those desires. Rekindle those goals and pronounce what your next steps are. Wipe your feet of the offense. Fill yourself with peace and hope and gratitude and those good things in your life. And replace the pain with those blessings you can find. Another friend and mentor added this piece. Use your imagination just to see yourself handing this off to a third party, your higher power, someone from the past that you admire, or a current one. But this is all done in your mind, right? Close your eyes and imagine. Tell them that you're ready to give this. And see in your mind's eye the box or the shape or whatever it is that you're giving to them to symbolically show that you're no longer willing to carry the burden, the weight, the pain, the suffering. Give it to the third party and allow and allow them to dispose of, carry it, take it away, transmute it. And as you give it away, see yourself receiving something in its place. And what is that amazing thing that you receive? I had a situation where I was leaving a company that I had worked for for 20 years. I had decided to stay home and we had adopted a young special needs boy. And so I was on maternity leave and there was one of my managers that I had primed to be able to step into supervision. And while I was gone, instead of just taking over and helping until I could come back for my two weeks um, before I resigned, um, for some reason, he had felt that he needed to create chaos and discredit me and bring everything in an uproar. And I had several managers that called me and talked to me while I was on my maternity leave and let me know what was going on. I couldn't understand why he had done this. And I just anguished. And even when I 
came back and turned my area over to him and was going through all the files. There were a lot of things he didn't understand about what was happening. There was someone in the corporate office that was sexually harassing the managers. He was totally unaware of that. And he was totally unaware of the fact that I knew what he'd been doing. And this was a young man that I had been helping out and tutoring, even giving financial support out of my own pocket to help him. And I was totally crushed by why he would feel that would be necessary, would even do that. It was unnecessary. And I only said one thing to him when I, as I turned things over to him. And I said, be careful what and who you hitch your wagon to. Sometimes you may be hauling the wrong load for the wrong person. And he was very confused about that, but I didn't, didn't feel like I needed to expand. But can I just say, I went on and on with having anguish about that. And I could not let it go. I could not set it down. It really bothered me. And I anguished. And one night I just said, I am done with staying up at night, not being able to sleep. And why did he do that? And this was unjust. And I went through all sorts of emotions. And one night I just got up and I prayed and I just said, I'm done with this. I want to lay this down. I no longer want to worry about this. I, I have no reason to doubt my own integrity. So why can't I let this down? Help me know something that will help me move forward. And I was directed to go to my scriptures and I opened it up. I said, I do not want to read for six hours. Please help me understand some. And I, my eyes went right to a verse and it said, wasn't even I Christ betrayed. can't even describe to you the immediacy of the feeling, but I can only describe it as the most encompassing peace as I contemplated stepping into a circle of others, especially a savior who had experienced more than I ever had, but he understood. He himself had experienced it. And the balm and the peace was so immediate that my mind raced with associations and comprehensions and realizations. And I went back to bed and I woke up with a new comprehension. I could say a forgiveness of this young man's inappropriateness. And I no longer anguished. I no longer dwelled upon it. In fact, it wasn't until I was writing the content for this show that I even remembered it again. Why would we not forgive? Honestly, we wouldn't if we're not ready. If it brings panic to our heart, then we have to ease into a future invitation to take advantage of freeing ourselves mentally, emotionally, physically, and even spiritually from that connection. If we are not ready and we are feeling forced into it or obligated to forgive, it can actually feel like another offense against us. If you're ready or the thoughts of forgiving are something on your mind, make a pros and cons list. Write it out. Here's a reason why I should forgive. And here's a reason why I'm not forgiving. Write that out. And when it makes sense for you, then move towards looking at forgiving. I want to share this last story because it has been my greatest teacher of the power of forgiveness to me. I had a friend, a family friend that I really cared about. And I knew he was struggling at times to make ends meet but also knew that there were things that I needed help with. And so I felt like this could be a real win-win. And periodically when I would think about him, I think maybe it's time for me to call And Sure enough, he was in that position where he could use some extra work and I could absolutely use the help. So after a number of years, uh, this win-win synergy of helping each other, uh, there was a certain project where I felt like he was working against me instead of with me and so we parted ways but unbeknownst to me he was not happy with how we had left things and he began to do things to undermine me and my family and word would get back to me and I was quite frankly shocked and saddened by the whole thing and I I thought it would blow away but it continued to go on and 
someone that I had held near and dear to my family was now virtually feeling like my enemy. And I thought things would blow over, but there just, there just seemed to be more vengeance that was coming towards me. And my emotions, my feelings wrapped around it went all the way from shocked and sad to how dare he and how does he, why does he think he can do this? And of all the people I've helped and why would that happen? And holy cow, how can I, how can I do what could I do to make things better? And then one day in contemplation, as I was asking for inspiration on what I could do, I heard, just love him. Well, of course, my ego got involved and I was like, well, how could I love someone who is not even being reasonable? So I decided to take my dogs for a walk and I walked and walked and walked and walked until I could think of ways that I could love him. I started thinking of things that he had done for me and how he had been a help to my family. And then I started thinking of good memories and good times that we'd had. And towards the end of the walk, my heart was opened. And I had such a love for this young man. So I opened up my phone and I texted him. And I just sent out a text of gratitude and love, truly how I really felt in my heart. Do you know what? The persecution stopped. I never heard from him again. I changed the situation and it got better because I changed. It wasn't about him changing his heart. It was about me changing my heart. That became such a great teacher and of great value to me because I was able to step into the freedom that comes from forgiveness. Now, I don't know where you are on your need to forgive someone. And if you're struggling with bitterness and you feel like you cannot change on your own, don't feel ashamed to reach out for help. I have done that and been supported by groups or counseling. For myself, forgiveness was something I avoided. I didn't know how to do it. And the opportunities to decide to step into forgiveness helped me find peace, relief, a lightening of my load, and even love where I didn't know I could feel to that depth. If you aren't ready to forgive, it's okay. Stick your toe into the possibility and revisit it at another time. If you're interested in a core piece in forgiveness, Next week's going to be a juicy one for you because I'm going to reveal the priceless piece that emerges when watching a young girl face her high school bully on national TV. So until next week, thank you for joining No Brainers Empowering Possibilities. We are creators. Let's create something amazing this week. Take care.